Cashflow Diary Podcast, episode 467. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. The podcast that teaches you insider tips, tactics, and strategies for creating leverage streams of cash flow into your life. Learn from top performing entrepreneurs, business owners, investors, and thought leaders from across the globe as they share their secrets to success. Like what you learn on this and other Cash Flow Diary podcast episodes? Go to learninvestingnow.com and sign up to receive powerful tips and information that will help you succeed as an entrepreneur and investor. Now, here's your host, investor, entrepreneur, business owner, educator, speaker, author, and master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow game, Jay Massey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Cashflow Diary Podcast. I'm your host, Jay Massey, and I'm glad that you are here today because here's the thing. When you go out there to attack the marketplace, if you will, uh, whether you realize it or not, it's kind of like playing a game. That's at least how I like to look at it. In fact, one of those most popular games that's been around for quite some time is a game by the name of chess. Now, I'm not going to be talking to you about chess directly today, but Chess is a strategy game, and so is building cash flow and especially real estate investing. In fact, the three basic parts of a game is your open, your mid, and end game. Open game, how do you start? Mid game, how do you continue and develop your positioning so that you can actually win? And then the end game, what do you consider to be that end game strategy that's going to, you know, take it across the finish line? And I have with me today an individual who has developed a, a great strategy, and he's going to be sharing that with us because it can be your very best way to open this game and most importantly, continue allow you making it to the mid game so you can get to the end game. Because let me ask you a question. If you could get a house for free, and that's in quotations, but if you got a house for free, would that help you build your cash flow? Well, Today, I have with me none other than Austin Miller. He's written a book called Free Houses, How to Build Your Real Estate Investment Portfolio with No Money. And here's the thing. He's going to share the strategy with you and I. So what does that mean today? That means we need to pay attention not only to him, but how he did it. But also, this is one of those times where you're going to take out that notebook. You're going to take out that pen, that iPad, that notepad, whatever you use to write with. Or maybe you're just going to bookmark it inside your phone. I don't really care except one thing. I care that you implement. So we're going to dig deep. We're going to figure this out because what it comes down to is that you and I both want to know more strategies as we go out there to build our cash flow. So help me welcome Austin Miller. Austin, how you doing? I'm great, Jay. How are you, man? Uh, so far, so good. So uh, I'm assuming you would not consider yourself a chess master yet? <laughs> no, no, I haven't played chess in many a year. <laughs> totally understood. <laughs> Good thing we're not going to talk about that. Now, uh, with this being your first time here, I have to ask you the same question I tend to ask everybody else uh, the first time that they're here. Are you ready? Yes, sir. All right. I tend to look at today's entrepreneurs a lot like yesterday's superheroes, you know, Batman, Robin, Wonder Woman, etc. because I think superheroes and entrepreneurs have a ton of things in common. Chief among them, as an entrepreneur, I can occasionally envision myself, you know, running around town, saving my customers with our products or services, and who knows, maybe even wearing a cape from time to time. But also, like a superhero, an entrepreneur has a beginning. So if you think about it, like Spider-Man, there was a time where he was just a kid going to school, doing his thing. Nothing really special about that. Taking some photos, trying to earn some pizza money. And then one day something special happens to him and he realizes I've got this special ability. Now I get to choose whether to use it for good or for evil. And well, with great power comes great responsibility, as they say. So with that being the background, my, my question to you is as follows. You know, b before your real estate portfolio, before you know, your book before the things that people know you for today. What we want to know is who is Austin Miller? All right. Well, I'll do my best to describe that short and sweet. <laughs> <laughs> or just long and slow is fine. It doesn't really matter. We got some time. That's awesome. Um, yeah. I mean, well, Austin Miller, um, I think boiled down to it, uh, 
wears many hats right now. That's that's husband, that's Christian, that's business owner, real estate investor. Um, but kind of you strip all that down and you get somebody who um, at the end of the day is willing to work hard for what they want to achieve. Um, I think that a lot of people, I, I like the uh, the analogy of the real estate game, you know, because we're playing games our entire life. And I remember being playing the real the uh, uh, sports card trading game when I was just a kid. And there was a kid across the street who would just, you know, he was, if he had it, he'd sell it. And he had a, even opened up an entrepreneurial card shop game, a um, uh, little where he, people would come by after school and, and buy cards. And he could, you know, he was a horse trader, but I was always about collecting the cards. You know, I was an entrepreneur that's got every single innovation. Mm-hmm. I was the kid who found out which one I really wanted and could negotiate a deal down for it and would stockpile mine. So when the day came, man, I would, I just liked having those and I could trade them or not, but I was in a good position. And and I think that's a lot of why I like to get into real estate investing and single family homes because, man, I just like having, building hard, working hard to build up that equity and build up those resources and those assets and those cash flowing um, items. So uh, I, I really, um, I like the analogy of the game because at the end of the day, everything you do in life is, is any business pursuit is a game. So, um, and, I, and I think that uh, I love the analogy of the superheroes because I always tend to, to identify with the underdog superhero, you know, the less flashy, like, like the Ninja Turtles or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Come on, Raphael. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> they yep. just, they weren't that flashy. They knew their superpower was karate, right? It wasn't like they could. Well, have it's a talking straight. turtle. I think that's a whole different. <laughs> let, let's start with that. <laughs> right? you know, I guess, the, you know, they did have superpowers from being the secret of the of radioactive ooze. ooze, man. Don't forget about mm-hmm. it. It's the radioactive ooze. Yes, because we had yep. talking rats and turtles and all kinds of interesting things. Yep. Yep. But they were out of the spotlight living in the sewers and uh using karate to defeat their enemies and so just kind of kind of a cool um analogy of the superhero but uh you know we uh, austin miller we're we're, um, live here in the midwest so not quite as uh the the markets out here are different than the coasts you know we're definitely a lot more laid back um even keeled we don't get the highs we don't get the lows (laughs) <laughs> you know, so a lot of what you see, on, you know, people HGTV buying something for nothing and selling it for three million. You know, it just doesn't happen out here. But that is, um, you know, speaking of Ninja Turtles, kind of the the tortoise and the hare, slow and steady wins the race. Um, is kind of my more uh, my strategy, um, and I know that there's ways I've I've done really well where I've made a quick buck on something and uh, a flip or a turn or something, but. Um, all in all, I think that the strategy that most real estate investors um, are going for is building that wealth, right? How much money can you make? How much money are you going to make when you stop going to your day job? Or if you were to, to get hurt and can't work anymore, how much money would you continue to make from that day forward? So that's my main, uh, my main uh, strategy. My main goal is producing that passive income. Yep, totally can relate to that because uh, the whole getting hurt thing is what pushed my wife and myself into seeking uh, a way to earn income if we were somehow disabled. And and at the end of the day, that turns out to be the better way to earn money. Who knew? (laughs) (laughs) I did not know that. I was just trying to solve a problem like, oh, look at that. Here we are. This is kind of neat. So take us through this journey. How do we go from cards to real estate because that there, there's a stretch there there's something that is there's a transformation there's a process i mean uh, yeah. i'm assuming you didn't graduate high school and and magically end up with a portfolio but there was a story and a process what's that transformation like absolutely um and even you know as a kid uh, there's a story that that i tell in the book that um is so ingrained in my mind. And I remember when I was a kid and I was driving around with my mom and we had a family friend who was a, like a developer who would build duplexes. And I was always really kind of revered people who were doing tangible things like building, um, houses and whatnot. But the, 
I, I noticed that he would build these duplexes and, and people would move in there and start paying him rent. And I said, what's up with that? She said, well, he's, he's getting tenants and then they pay off the house for him and then he sells it or he keeps it and they keep cash flowing each month. And I just remember asking my mom, I said, mom, why doesn't everybody do that? You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, those questions. I love that. Hey, mom, that makes a lot of sense. What am I missing? <laughs> right. You know, it sometimes takes that innocence of a child to, to just point out the obvious. And I just remember thinking like, that's something I want to do when I'm older. It just seems like you put a little bit of work on the front and people are giving him money every day for, for just their living expense. So I think that. And growing up in, in the area I grew up in was very, it just was growing all the time. So seeing those developers and those people who through real estate were doing well, um, I knew that I wanted somehow to be in that, in that marketplace. I didn't know what that looked like exactly. So, um, I went to college and I got a degree in construction, which, um, I graduated college in 2009. And if you can remember what the economy was like in 2009, it wasn't uh, good for construction. <laughs> it was well, <laughs> desolate. I mean, it was the crickets. You know what I mean? So I, I had this idea like, I'm going to be a home builder and it's going to be awesome. And then the economy just like, <laughs> and at that same time, you know, some of the guys I revered growing up, they weren't doing so hot, you know? So I, it really kind of turned a lot of things on its head um, from what I traditionally thought. But I got a job with a commercial contractor and loved it. They, it was a good salary and I was building big projects. But I remember one day I was sitting at my desk and just thinking like, I'm a year out of college. Uh, I can do anything like this real world thing. Isn't really all it's cracked up to be. It's, <laughs> you know, it's that I'm sitting here building someone else's dream. And I was seeing other people starting small businesses and things, and they weren't any better than me. They didn't work any harder than me, you know, just they did it and I didn't. Right. And at the same time, I was learning a lot about reading a lot about real estate investing. And granted, that was a good time to get into uh, real estate because it's like, man, everyone in America is running away from houses. And so usually when you look at what everyone else is doing, if you do the opposite of that, that's probably what you should be doing. And <laughs> it's, it's, it is a simple strategy for sure. <laughs> and just don't follow the masses. Um, so, and, and, um, uh, and so from that point, I, I started going to, joined a real estate investment group, um, went to a weekend seminar. I mean, just dove into the content and said, man, I'm going to buy, I'm going to have a house this year. I'm, I'm going to buy one. I'm going to get one. And, uh, from that point realized that I didn't, I didn't have any money cause I was just fresh out of college. You know, I had no reserves, no, just operating money to, to basically, um, as I'm starting that first year out, figure out how to budget and all that stuff. And it probably had a couple thousand dollars in my bank account. Um, anyway, uh, knew that that first year didn't have any money, whatever it took, I was going to get a rental property. I was going to get a house and going from not having any money and having that first house without using any of my own money. I just set me up to continue to be in real estate investing for the last pretty much Oh, uh, eight years going on to my eighth year. Yeah. So <laughs> got it. I just want to underscore something though. You said yeah. you had a degree in construction, but yet that wasn't enough to figure out how to get your first, uh, investment property without still some content, some additional specialized information. Absolutely. You know, they don't really teach you that much at college, Jay. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I know this, but it's good that other people hear it from someone other than me. That's why I asked. Man, yeah, that uh, I learned more in that first six months out of college than I learned in my entire four years at university. And I think Kiyosaki's uh, wife, Kim, said it best. I thought that when I graduated college, my education ended. But the day I graduated, my education actually started. Right. So, just yeah. A, yeah. Again. No, 100%. I totally hear you because what it comes down to is understanding that at the end of the day, there's a difference between schooling and education. And there's a lot of schooling out there, but I would be hard pressed to say that we actually know uh, a lot of things, but that's a whole nother story. Now, you've mentioned something that I think was also important in this whole weekend seminar thing, because y your book is called 
free houses. And when you go to these weekend seminars, often they're trying to say that this is what you can do. You you can actually get a house using none of your own money or no credit or none of this and none of that. So d- do tell us how, like how this sounds like a great open strategy for a lot of people who are looking to play the game because they could find themselves in a sim- uh, similar situation as to yourself. So what's it all about? Well, the, in, and there's no secret in real estate. There's the education. There's a ton of education out there. I mean, it's everywhere. And some of it is really good. And some of it's okay, you know, and some of it gets a bad rap. But I think that in today's age, you know, when I got started in 2010, there wasn't near the podcasts. There wasn't near the online resources. There wasn't near the education. There was there is so much information out there right now between books, podcasts, YouTube videos, local real estate investment groups that there is a million ways to learn about real estate. So you don't have to spend a ton of money and go to a big, huge real estate conference. Um, you, there's plenty of other ways to supplement that. Um, and, and when I got started out, the best thing I did was join my local RIA group, you know, to talk to other investors, like-minded people. What are you doing? Who are you using for this? What, what resources do you have? Um, but along the way I have gone because I do believe in investing in an in education to weekend seminars along the way. Um, but I think the first one I went to, like I guess I didn't have any money. I think it was like $500 and just being around other people who wanted to do the same thing I did was, um, and talking to them was, was so valuable. Um, but, um, that being said, transitioning into the book, um, you know, people say free houses and they, they kind of look at me funny, like <laughs> what, what's a free, what's a free house. Right. And so I, I always just kind of make the analogy in that you know, nothing in our life is truly free. And you always hear like high school coaches, no such thing as a free lunch. I remember right. my coach, it's, it's, that's a, a common phrase because in order to get a free lunch, you ha- really have to spend most importantly, an hour of your time, which Time is our most precious commodity. It's not something that we could ever replicate or get more of. So if I say I want to give you a free sandwich, some people would say that sounds like a free lunch, but others would say I'm not I'm not exchanging an hour of my time for some just for a sandwich. Right. right. So when I tell people I'm a real estate investor, they're always, always the first thing they say is, Man, I'd love to flip houses. I just don't have the money. I mean, it's like ninety-nine out of a hundred people say that. But I respond to them, and real estate investing, it isn't free, but if you're willing to spend time and effort, you don't have to spend any money. So in today's world, if we tend to label things as free, if, if you don't have to exchange any of your own money, then I have gotten to a point where I've acquired an entire portfolio of free houses. Got it. Now, I totally understand. But what I, I like about what you just said is that if you're willing to exchange time and effort, uh, then you don't need any money. So it's not like you're contributing nothing to the equation because knowledge, time, money, and credit have always been a part of it. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's just that you don't have to have all four of the ingredients. So in the process of getting started, what have you found to be that strategy or strategies that has been the most successful for you? Well, I think that um, obviously when, when you buy a house, there's going to be a lump sum of money that is required, required to take deed on that house. That funding source could be a number of different things. It could be a hard money lender, a private lender. It could be a uh, someone that you know that you want to partner with. It could be a line of credit. It could be a credit card. It could, there's a bunch of different ways to come up with access to cash that you can use for funding a project that never has to be uh, your own money. There's times when I have put some money into a property, but it's very, very rare. I'm always using OPM or other people's money, a funding source. There's a wide range of them, and several chapters in the book talk about how to go about using them, Uh, but um, that funding is typically the first hurdle people have to jump over when they start to realize and and stop thinking the way that society has told them to think their entire life and start thinking about what their possibilities are, they can find funding. And that's probably the most instrumental part of of the equation. But but let's dig in and in on this one right here, because there's a lot of people that would say to, to you right now, Austin, you know, 
that's great. It worked out for you, but who's going to give me money? I mean, there's that, mm-hmm. there's that prevalent thought. No one's going to give me money. I don't, I have nothing is, is the yeah. usually how it's said. So what would you say to that? Hello there, entrepreneur. This is Jay Massey. I know that if you've ever gone over to the site, cashflowdiary.com, you may have asked yourself, where on earth do you get a domain name from? Especially as you are beginning to build your bigger, better, better business, you need a web presence. You need the email address. You need a way for people to contact you electronically so that you can stop doing the at gmail.com game. Well, the good folks over at GoDaddy have definitely supplied us with every domain that we have ever used. So what I want you to do is I want you to go over to trygodaddy.com forward slash cashflow diary. Again, that's trygodaddy.com forward slash cashflow diary because it's a quick way for you to get set up to capture your domain name the exact way that you want it. They got easy search functions. And most importantly for you is that you'll be up and running today. As I said, Once you get started, stay started. Don't let small little obstacles of how to get your own domain name going stop you. So again, go to trygodaddy.com forward slash cash flow diary and let's get back to the rest of the story. That would be like 22-year-old Austin. That's how I started out saying that exact same thing. (laughs) All righty then. Exact same thing. Then you have an answer. Come on. So maybe I can just talk as if I'm talking to 22-year-old Austin. There you go. Um, I would say for, I cannot even, you know, now that Facebook has kind of taken over the world and you can't even scroll through Facebook without seeing things in your liked interest. I can't get on Facebook without seeing private money lenders and hard money lenders for real estate investing on my newsfeed. Like you could go Google right now, private money, real estate loans or hard money, real estate loans. And there are companies all across America. I would prefer to use someone a little more local, but you know, just by within a minute, with 30 seconds, the touch of your hands and keyboard or on your smartphone, you could find a funding source for somebody that is flexible on things like how much down payment, what's your credit, what's your experience, just by Googling them. So the first one that I actually used was a hard money lender. And that's how I did my first deal. So people say, well, that's great for you, Austin, but it's not great for me. And I get that all the time. I can't really they tell us the nuts and bolts. I literally found a hard money lender who was willing to give me a real estate investment loan. There it is. Oh, so, so, but the, okay. So let's talk about that for a second. I'm assuming that was not your first conversation with someone of this time. Where was it? Like, did you literally say, you find mean? one person, the very first person you talked to and they're like, Oh sure. Here. Uh, no. So, uh, you know, I guess my first conversation was I went to banks, okay. right? I went to your, your typical lenders and cause I didn't know I was, I was green. I, I just knew that banks gave loans, but um, you knew somebody had the money. <laughs> <laughs> right. I knew they were in the business of giving, lending out money. So, you know, that's where I went. Um, and what I quickly found out was that they wanted 20% down. Right. Right. I mean, you go into a, a bank, whether it's a big, national bank or community bank, you say, I want to buy a real estate investment property. Typically, as you'll they'll say, okay, we want 20% down. So I knew that I, that I could not do that. I knew that, that, that if I was going to buy a house for $100,000, I didn't have $20,000 to put down. So um, basically, uh, I, I started researching, you know, finding, getting involved in, in the real estate investment uh, community and strategies and started finding wholesale deals and whatnot. And so then I went back to my, my uh, banker. I said, hey, let me ask you this. If I find a house that's uh, worth $100,000 and I can buy it for 50, will you loan me the money? And the conversation was completely different. It was like, wow, well, we could be flexible about this. You may not have to pay the whole or any of the 20% down. We can do this. And it was really interesting. So what I found out was if I can... And in the world of banking, there's the the 80-20 rule, which is that's both for internal guidelines. Every bank has their own rules and regulations, right? And then there's national guidelines. And I'm not an expert in banking, but they want that 20% equity. They want that that 20% down payment because they want you to have some skin in the game. They if you stop paying, they want to be able to actually force the sale or foreclose on that house and come out ahead because at the end of the day, they're in the business to make money, right? They're not in the business to just help real estate investors get out there. But what I found was using that 80-20 rule, 
if a house is worth a hundred thousand dollars, if I'm only in it for eighty thousand, then that made that twenty percent difference pretty much would make up my down payment. I could almost prove or show my equity to be strong enough to where I could negate, uh, minimize, or take away that down payment. So that's when I started on the quest for funding sources and it landed me at private money. Interesting. So instead of going to, you just found a way. It, you, you seemed the. It sounds like you made a decision, and you're like, dude, this is this is how it's going to happen. And at the end of the day, uh, on the other side of this, I will be where I uh, where I want to be. That's what mm-hmm. I. That's what I am hearing when you're talking. Yeah, and you know so, a lot of people. Well, that, but that's the superhero or superhuman maybe power that I want to talk about. Not everybody has the ability to create a decision and actually follow it through. So where do you think that came from for you? Uh, For me, I think that, and I've thought about this a lot. There are some people who have drive to do something like that. And there are a lot of people who don't. And even going to real estate investor groups or seminars, you see people, you follow up with them and like, Hey, how are you doing? I had, how many deals have you done? Like, oh, I did two. You know, I bought a house for the first one. And you congratulate the other person. Well, I haven't done anything. I've looked at some homes. I've done this. And what's the difference between those two people? And I, like I said, I've thought about it a lot. Some people have that drive to do, come up with a way to be their, their superhero, as you would say it, mm. to find a way. And, and others just don't have that drive. And I think that the biggest problem in today's society is that there's too many distractions and distractions distractions okay i heard a quote and i can't even remember who said it but it said the world is made for disciplined men and Hmm. when you look at nowadays everyone is there's so many different avenues and so many different uh ways to make money and even in our real estate investor group here we have people that Every single month, we'll have new people that never come again. And we'll have people come for six months and never come again. If you aren't disciplined, if you allow yourself to get distracted, because it could be kids that every time you come home at night, they're yelling in the other room. Or there could be a softball league that's calling your name. It could be a uh, the iPhone sitting in your hand. It could be playing in a band. I remember I, whenever I was working 50 hours a week, I made the decision to get into this. And I said, every night I'm going to go home and I'm going to work two, at least two hours. So I went to Target, bought a little desk, file cabinet, and I set this little office in the corner of the room in this house I was renting every night from six to eight, five to seven, whatever it was. I was calling houses, trying to figure out how to make an offer, just doing market research, reading books. And most people won't do that because they find every excuse in the world to victimize themselves and say, I worked all day. I, I don't have time for this. I, I need a break. I need to play, you know, hang out with my buddies and play intramural softball. I need to do this. I, I need to sit down and watch TV. Just, But if you can remove those distractions and you can remove the, uh, the, the thought of not following through and you can stay disciplined, anybody can do it. No argument. Uh, so with, with that being said, what, have you found to be the the strategy that you are beginning to prefer? What I mean by this is, I know for myself, uh, where we, where I started isn't necessarily where I stayed, and I refined things over time. Because when you're playing, you know, a, a game or a strategy game or any game for that matter, the first time you play, you you start to become a more experienced player, and you start to play uh differently because you start to see that there's other possibilities and probabilities that you can take advantage of if you go out there to make these things happen. So I guess mm. my thought process is how have you found yourself evolving over the years now that you've been playing for a while? I love that question uh, because we have developed a system for single family homes and particularly over the last four years, it's pretty much been one single family home after the other. We buy them cheap, we fix them up, we put a renter in there, we refinance them, we do it all over again. And single family homes is, I mean, it is solid, right? I mean, it's one of the most solid vehicles for wealth in the past and in the history of our country and of the world, really. 
But we're at a point now where we've systemized it and we're at a crossroads. Like you said, there's so many options out there. I think that, again, distractions, right? Mm -hmm. There's You could chase as many rabbits as you want. I think Mark Cuban said, you know, know the difference between taking advantage of a bull market and providing a pro- quality product, right? So which which things are going on out there that you can make some money on and which things are your bread and butter? So my, and, and if you go chase too many of those, then you're going to find yourself in trouble. And so the crossroads that we're at right now is we've got this system. It works. If it's not broke, don't fix it. But there's also all these other opportunities, apartments, storage units, vacation rentals, nightly rentals that seem to really have emerged. Um, some of them recently and some of them um, are just as old as single family homes. But as of right now, single family homes is what we continue to do and are going to continue to do as we explore other options and hopefully um, just uh, maybe either start a second line of investing <laughs> or transition to stop doing single family homes. But in the meantime, we're still going to keep doing single family. Well, as you may or may not be aware, uh, I, I myself have seen the, the same transition and we've begun to participate in the whole world of short term rentals because well, yep. it's awesome. And yep. <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, I want to say you're still in effect. If you like single family homes, I'm not saying don't do single family homes. I'm just saying change the customer that's coming to the single family house. And what yep. ends up happening is an amazing set of numbers that allows that wealth and income creation to to just be accelerated. You can still buy it the same way you're used to and be as creative as you have been. But now you have even more income on the other side. So with that being said, I guess the question that I think many people would be asking themselves at this point is why take the time to write a book? Well, I love to teach. Um, honestly, uh, scripture says those who walk with the wise become wise. And I walked with a lot of wise men along my journey. I was fortunate um, both from people that, you know, they didn't hand it to me on a silver platter, but that I would call up and say, let me take you to lunch or, Hey, would you want to partner on a deal? I've got a great deal. Um, you know, just having the initiative to pursue them and ask them for knowledge. And, uh, and, and, and throughout all that, I love to teach one of my, um, mentors early on said, if you want to learn, teach. Yeah. And so I think that through the process of writing this book, just helping other people. And what you'll find is you're not giving out free information. The only people who are going to read this book are the ones who want to get out there and make it happen. You know, it's, it, you, you, I wish that, uh, you know, someone said, well, you're going to give away all your secrets. I'm like, man, first off, they're not my secrets. This stuff's been around forever. You know, (laughs) I mean, what, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought you invented (laughs) this whole thing. What are you talking about? (laughs) <laughs> no, I hear you. Yeah, exactly. So it, it's that someone said you're going to give away your secrets, but um, I'm only giving them away to the other people who are like me, who are going to take initiative. A lot, some people will see this and they'll be like, no, that's too good to be true. I'm not buying that. Other people will be like, oh, I want to get it. They'll buy it. They'll never even pick up the book. Other people will pick up the book, read it, and they'll have the strategies, but they'll never do anything with them, right? And then the last well, type of person, that one is the most frustrating, but keep going. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's very frustrating. Um, and from my side, especially, but the last person who is the one who buys it, reads it and actually follows through with it. Um, you know, I, I think that there's, there's so much room for growth in this market. And, um, I, I just, if I could be a part of, of helping someone else on that journey, I feel like that's a calling of mine. And, uh, it just, uh, wanted to write it so I could be a resource to other people as, as some have been to me along the way. Totally understood. I I absolutely agree. So for those that have listened this far and have, you know, enjoyed what they, what you've had to say and and possibly want to, you know, grab a copy of the book or find out more about what you got going on, what's going to be the best way for them to track you down and make that happen? Yeah, that would be through, um, amazon.com. You can buy the book free houses. Just search for it right on Amazon. Or if you want to email me, Austin at hickoryhomebuyers.com. I'm always available. Excellent. Now, as we wind down, I've got a final question for you because I I want to hear your answer. Um, So 
let's pretend that someone listening, uh, that they're, they've, they've gotten to this point of decision. They're like, you know what? Austin did it. It can obviously be done. So I'm going to do it too. And they, they reach that point of decision. In fact, often when we reach these points of decision as a human being, we were often confronted with a companion and that companion comes in the form of a voice. And that voice often says things like, you know, are you seriously thinking you think you are going to get a free house? No one's going to give you money. I mean, there's no <laughs> way this is going to work for you. And for some people, they're even related to that voice. So my question to you is as follows. Let's pretend that they're actually going to follow through this time. They're actually going to get it done, Austin. They're that last person you talked about who's going to make it happen. And they're going to do so in the next 24 to 48 hours. What would you suggest that they do? I would suggest that, first and foremost, remove the naysayers, <laughs> whether that's internal or external. Because the first time I went to buy, do a, a, a weekend seminar i remember i came home and i was so excited this is this is in the first 24 hours as the one to the seminar and i came home my roommate goes hey how many houses did you buy today and i was like nice i want want to punch him in the mouth you know what i mean like <laughs> i had this dream and i was so stoked and he was just trying to crush it right and so then what happened those voices that you just talked about started up in my head like oh man i can't really do this i don't know what i'm doing I'm, this is stupid like and so the first thing I would say to you is, obviously, you it, if you're that far, you have the goal, you have your why, remove the negativity because it's not going to do anything but slow you down. Agreed. Uh, at the end of the day, what it comes down to is making sure that you are focused on the right things at the right time. And, and more importantly, that you keep your headspace going the, the correct direction, because when you are focused on the right things. It makes it easier for you to do the right things. And sometimes the right things are not comfortable because it could require getting rid of an influence that you have grown close to. <laughs> totally hear you 100%. Um, yeah. I, I do want to say I, I definitely appreciate you taking the time to to be here and appreciate you uh, sharing the information that you shared, taking the time to write the book. All of these things take additional effort and energy that you don't have to contribute, but you did. And I appreciate you sharing your knowledge, your wisdom, as well as your insight here with us today at the Cashflow Diary. Absolutely, man. It's been a privilege and a lot of fun. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It's time for you to move at the speed of instruction. What does that mean? That means get over there because you want a free house. I want a free house. And you know what? If we're like Oprah, you get a free house and you get a <laughs> Everybody gets a free house. So what does that mean? That means go buy the book, read the book, open the book, do what the book says. Because at the end of the day, you know that this information isn't revolutionary. It's not new. He didn't invent something new that you and I can't do and it's been done before, which means you have the physical ability to do it, too. Ladies and gentlemen, the only time you've got is now a clock. It's been fun talking to you today. I look forward to talking to you soon. Until next time.